Good, happy Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, 2020 presidential hopeful headlining Clinton Kennedy dinner. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. Democrats are focused on engaged voters in turning seats blue locally and in Washington. New Hampshire's Democratic Party is celebrating victories in local races last week, most notably Joyce Craig, who will become Manchester's first female mayor. Well, our eyes are on 2018, and we welcome anyone that wants to help us uh, defeat uh, Chris Sununu and uh, pick up the majorities. The Kennedy-Clinton dinner in Hollis is the party's major fall fundraiser. State Republicans were quick to criticize the event's name, calling former President Clinton a sexual predator. Well, you know, I think the Republicans got their hands filled with Donald Trump right now. New Hampshire's delegation taking aim at the GOP tax plan, saying it would benefit corporations and hurt the middle class. This is nothing more than a tax scam for millionaires and billionaires and corporate special interests. We need your help to fight against these proposals, to make your voices heard. U.S. Representatives Grace Meng of New York and Tim Ryan of Ohio spoke on unifying the party. We need to start building systems that put the people first. In 2020, presidential candidate Maryland Congressman John Delaney says Democrats must focus on getting out the vote and talking to people about what they care about. They want some civility in government. They're tired of this fighting. And uh, that's how I think we Democrats win in 18 and, and 20, because that's what the American people want. But presidential hopeful says that partisan politics is preventing America from getting things done. And Democrats hope that last week's success will just be the beginning. Reporting live in Hollis, Mike Cronin, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Victim says man in security guard outfit assaulted her in North End. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Here on Hanover Street where Boston police say that attempted assault happened around 2.30 this morning. Police just releasing a photo of that suspect. Take a good look. According to the victim, the suspect told her around 2.30 this morning that he had to talk to her about an important issue and that she had to go with him immediately. That woman then apparently followed the man a short distance and he attempted to indecently assault her, but she ran away, then calling police. Now, the suspect tonight is described as a black male, approximately 5 feet 10 inches tall, a medium build, and again, wearing some kind of dark uniform that resembles a security guard officer's uniform. Anyone with information about that suspect is urged to contact Boston Police. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Portland police search for armed robbery suspect. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. Steve Megan, according to police suspect involved in that robbery is still on the run tonight. It happened around 2 this afternoon. Police say the man threatened people inside the bank with a semi-automatic handgun before getting away with cash. No one was hurt during the robbery. Police closed a section of Ocean Ave near the Presumpscot Street intersection for several hours while they searched for the suspect. That area is back open tonight. Investigators described the suspect as a white male wearing a blue hooded sweatshirt, sunglasses, and a wig with long black hair. They say the man is thin with a deep voice. 
He is considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information about the suspect, you're encouraged to contact Portland Police. The FBI is also assisting with the investigation. Live in Portland tonight, Tyler Cataret, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. Again, if you have any information, call the Portland Police Department to help them out in the investigation. Trump to keep ban on big game trophies for now. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Deals are here at Target. Yeah. You know what that means. Don't look through. The through. This Saturday only, save 25% on toys. Save big with weekend deals. Only at Target. Next here, the outrage this evening after a decision by the Trump administration lifting a ban on importing trophies of elephants hunted in Africa. Here's ABC's David Wright. The majestic African elephant is still a threatened species, but as of today, big game hunters who kill these creatures in Zambia or Zimbabwe will be allowed to get their trophies through U.S. Customs. President Trump is not a big game hunter, but his sons are. That's Don Jr. in 2011, an elephant tail in one hand, a knife in the other. In an interview two years ago, Don Jr. insisted the money hunters spend on safari helps protect these creatures. It all gets used. Nothing gets wasted in Africa. That money goes to fund the anti-poaching leagues that prevent the people from going in and doing damage. But his own mother seems to disapprove. Ivana Trump wrote in her memoir, Why Go to Zimbabwe to Shoot Bambi and Dumbo? They want to kill one of these animals to get a trophy for the room. Today's announcement is sparking outrage across the political spectrum. From Fox News commentator Laura Ingram to, just today, Ellen DeGeneres. Elephants show compassion, sympathy, social intelligence, self-awareness. And tonight, late word, the president appears to be listening to those concerns. Tweeting tonight, he has, quote, put the big cane trophy decision on hold until such time as he can review conservation facts. David? David, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Saturday, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.